So now we are turning to the left, and then we would like to start from Ms. Uh, Excellency Ms. Maria Mutagamba, uh, Water Minister of Uganda. Thank you very much, and uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, we are talking about a disaster and what lessons we have learned. I come from Uganda, I'm Minister for Water and Environment. As a country, we have learned some lessons. One, that disaster is bound to, to be there and to continue, especially with the climate change. Scientific reports that have been quoted by the Crown Prince and all the reports that we have from the Intergovernmental Climate Change Panel, we realize that, especially at the tropics, we are likely to have more rain, which will be coming in short periods, but torrential. And in that way, we end up with the floods. And on the other hand, we are likely to have prolonged droughts, which also end up in a disaster. So either way, we people at the tropics, we are bound to continue with disaster, water-related disasters. So that is one lesson that we have learned and we have accepted it. And as such, what do we intend to do? What have we suffered? Of course, in the recent past, as it was highlighted, in 2007, not only Kenya suffered, but Uganda suffered floods, and I witnessed bridges being washed away. And of course, for a bridge to be washed away in Uganda means a lot of sacrifice in terms of reconstructing it, because it means we shall have less water or less medicine or less schools built. So that's what it means. We have also seen in the last two years, 2010, 2011, landslides in the areas of the mountains where people have died and entire school was wiped away because of a landslide that covered the entire school. What, have we, what, have, what can we do about that? One thing, as government, we have decided to institute a planning. Before we have been planning in a short term, for three years, but now we have a national de de development plan, which is a five-year development plan, and in there we have factored the issues of climate change, so that every sector, every ministry has got to understand and prepare for disaster in its own area. And we have also tried to make sure that we have an agency that can inform Ugandans about the possible climate changes and the implications of that. So we are in the process, as I speak now, the parliament is in the process of debating the agentization of the meteorological department so that it becomes an autonomous uh, body so that it can efficiently get its own resources and also give efficient information for people to follow. On the other hand, we are looking at the local government because this is where act act activity takes place. We want to empower the local government so that they know what to expect at any particular time, and also to have a software component of sensitization of communities. What do you do when a prediction of a flood or a drought is put in place? How do you respond? What do you prepare? When do you evacuate? All that type of information, we are working on it, but of course, definitely the limitations have been financed, and they will continue to be financed because of an, our narrow resource envelope. On the other hand, when we have floods, we also have disadvantages, I said about bridges that get washed away, about schools that have become inaccessible, about water being flooded and it, uh, contaminated. What have we done? In my ministry as a water, what for water, we have tried to acquire mobile laboratories so that we can move around in an affected area to test the kind of water that there is. We are also trying to acquire mobile water treatment plants that can give water to those people that have been affected. But of course, you also depend on the availability of resources. As I speak now, I can boast of one unit of each, and definitely, if what be had, that is not enough. On the other hand, we are also trying to sensitize the communities because the dangers in Uganda and Africa mainly are human-induced. We have devastated the environment. So it is a big challenge for us to educate our communities about the environment. Most of our countries are hills and valleys. So we, because of the population explosion, we have invaded the valleys and invaded the wetland. And because of that, water flows have been diverted and we end up with the floods. It is a big challenge for us, especially policy makers and implementers, to get people to appreciate that Africa should not be uh, 
going where water is supposed to pass. Because of the urbanization, the, um, the, the slum dwelling is also encroaching on wetland. So we are now working on how to plan our cities so that we can get people from the waterways, which are known because they are definitely physically uh, visible. We want to get them from there, but that requires a lot of planning in terms of urban settlements, something that will take time and require the resources. On the other hand, we are also looking at schools, because most of the time people don't know. So we are looking at the curriculum of schools so that children get to learn about the issues of floods, of water-related diseases at the early age. So we are working with the Ministry of Education to include in the curriculum so that people get to learn at an early age. Uh, however, in Africa, we have a problem, a silent tsunami. I've seen the tsunami in Japan. It came, hit, and everybody was concerned. But in Africa, we have a silent tsunami. This is sanitation, poor sanitation and hygiene. We know that every day in Africa, we lose over 3,000 children every day dying because of poor sanitation. And nobody records it, nobody mentions it. There are no cameramen to record that, but that's what is happening on the continent. And as we look at disaster, let us globally address the issue of sanitation and hygiene. My friend from the NGO talked about it. And I think it is an issue that we need to bring into the broader agenda of disaster, water-related disaster, because this one is part of water, sanitation, and hygiene, the WASH campaign that we have been advocating. I want to tell you one experience. In 2007, in September, I visited one region of Uganda well, it was all floods, and everybody was running away, and we were trying to evacuate them. That was Karamoja, those of you who know Uganda. I went back in April. I found women eating leaves to get water because there was no water left. That is disaster. So we really have to find a way to manage water resources management. We really have to be helped. This one I must confess. We have not done much as a country and as a continent. I think we need to, to do more on water resources management if we are going to avoid water disaster related management action. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Another quite impressive intervention. And uh, you stress the importance of the community, education in the community, housing in the community. That is all related to the disaster re reduction as a uh, with unit, community as a unit. And also you mentioned the hidden disaster that is the uh, drought or the sanitation problems that are killing every day. That is very important aspect to be, to be brought into this discussion. Thank you very much.